Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today we are going to be doing my January wrap up. It has been so long since I have done a wrap up. Like, so long. But we're back, I guess. I hate wrap ups. I, like, I love watching them. And I am the person who's like, when they don't talk about every single book that they read in a month, I'm like, why not? And I'm also the exact same person who's like, I don't want to talk about every single book I read this month. So, am I a hypocrite? Yes, I read 3,960 pages across 10 books. I listened to a total of 31.33 hours and most of those were probably on like three times speed. So like it was 10 hours probably, which is not actually not that much. All 10 of the books that I read in the month were all fantasy. Three were audiobooks, one was an ebook, five were physical, and then one was mixed. So physical and audio. Though sometimes it can be ebook and audio, but I know for a fact that that one was physical and audio. Eight of the books I read were for adults, one was a middle grade, and one was a YA. I gave one two star, five three stars, and four four stars. And that gives me an average rating of 3.3, which is like pretty low, but honestly, I still consider it a pretty good month overall. I think I'll go in order of how I read them. Also, I look so tired. I swear, I'm actually not. I slept very well last night. <laughs> First book I read this month was Black Powder War by Naomi Novik, which is the third book in the Temerar series. So I I am eating this series up. I'm actually currently reading the fourth one. I'm about halfway through it. And again, I'm really enjoying it. So I gave this a four stars and this was the book that I read as an audiobook and physical. It is so hard for me to talk about these books because I don't really know why I love them so much. Like it was a four stars. I had such a good time with it. I think this was my least favourite so far, but still thoroughly enjoyed it. So this series follows Captain Will Lawrence and at the beginning of the story he is the captain of this ship and it is set in the Napoleonic Wars and it is an alternate history because there are dragons. At the very start of the book he ends up getting into a bit of a skirmish with one of the French ships and they end up winning and they take whatever is on the ship for their own. And one of the things on the ship is this dragon's egg. So they take it and then it starts to hatch. And so the way that it kind of works in this society is like you have to like immediately harness them. Uh, so basically you nearly like claim it as your own. And nobody really wants to do this because they're all, you know, Navy. Well, Captain Lawrence steps up and says, okay, I'll do it. And then he actually ends up bonding pretty well with the dragon, which he names Temeraire. And the series just follows them as this war is going on. As I said, I find it really hard to explain what I love about it because it's not super plot heavy or political or like super concentrated on the war. Like it is, but in a very subtle way. I love Will and I love Temeraire and I love their friendship and their bond and I love them. <laughs> like Temeraire, one of the best dragons. I just love, I love Temeraire. <laughs> a lot of the side characters kind of blend together. Like I don't really, <laughs> I don't really bother to feel very attached to them because Naomi Novik, like, she is kind of brutal in this series. Like, she is killing people, like, left, right, and center. So, like, I don't really bother to get too attached to the side characters, but Will and Temeraire, I absolutely adore them. I also always like to point out that, like, if you didn't like Spinning Silver or Uprooted or the, the Scalamon series, you might still enjoy this because it is very different from them. I think all of her books are very different from each other. I would say this is, like, her most basic writing. I still really enjoy it. I think it's very solid writing but like it's not super fancy and it's not super like stream of consciousness or any other thing, thing like that. So like you might enjoy this more. I just absolutely fly through these books. Like I absolutely devour them. I love them so much. They're so much fun for me and as I said I don't think that they are the most plot heavy. Like it's a nine book long series and so like I feel like overall like there is a plot because obviously they want to defeat Napoleon and I imagine that will be done by the ninth book <laughs> but it's not like every book is a different battle which I think maybe I kind of thought when I first went in is like oh it's gonna be like all of this like you know political stuff and strategy and all of that and it's not it is very much like there is one small thing that they kind of want to do it's like in the first book it was just the two of them bonding and getting to know each other and getting used to like how the aviators work and like how their flying formations work and all of this. So that was like the first book. And like, yes, there was a battle at the end, but like it was a very small portion of it. And that's the same with every book. Like 
I don't want to spoil anything, but like the second book, they're going on a journey somewhere else because they need to do this like one, like in the grand scheme, like all of these things add up, but like it doesn't seem very significant, if you get what I mean. Um, and that's kind of the case with every single book. Like things, they have like one goal that like you might be thinking, but does it really matter that much to like the whole, you know, war effort? But like I think these things will all add up and like there is usually like a small battle at the end of each of them if you like that. <laughs> so yeah, I do think though this was my least favorite. The next book that I read was Grey Warren by Maggie Stiefvater and I gave this a three out of five, I believe. Yes, three out of five stars. Um, this is the third book in the Dreamers trilogy, which the Dreamers trilogy is a follow on, on series from The Raven Cycle. And I have had uh, mixed opinions on this. So I gave the first book a four stars, the second a two, and then this one a three. And I can't really tell you too much about this, apart from because I don't want to spoil you. But basically it follows the Lynch brothers and kind of them learning about like their past and there might be someone coming after Ronan because of his abilities that we learn about in the Raven Cycle. So like that's a very like basic synopsis and also we get introduced to a couple of new characters as well. This book, I'm actually, I think I might just read you my Goodreads review because like even though it's really short, I feel like it says everything I need to say. I don't think a book or series has ever made me so conflicted about a rating before. I love the story of this trilogy. I love the brothers and the magic and finding out more than we ever knew before. Honestly, I do think that the story in here is five stars, but the execution was a two star, maybe a three. This did not need to be a trilogy. There was no excitement throughout the books and the story dragged most of the time. Some of the storylines felt like they were being much more drawn out than they needed to be. It was trying to be more action oriented than the whimsical style of the Raven Cycle, but I don't think that suits her writing style. I do think I would like to revisit this series in the future now that I know what to expect and see if that changes my feelings on it. And that's basically, I don't really have anything else to say on it. I think that sums it up perfectly. This really did. I was so conflicted because when I like finished the book and thought about like the overall story of the brothers. I loved that. But oh my god, was getting there <laughs> a journey and not a good one. <laughs> I would love to reread The Raven Cycle soon <laughs> at some point maybe. I always say I'm gonna reread things and then I don't. So but I would like to reread them and then reread these now that I have like a better idea of like what is going on and maybe like try and see it, like where she was coming from earlier on because a lot of the stuff just felt like it was coming from nowhere, like she was just pulling it out of thin air and maybe going back I would actually see some of that and appreciate it more. So yeah, uh, three stars and mixed opinions. The third book that I read in the month was Lost in the Moment and Found by Sean McGuire and this is the eighth? I don't know, don't quote me on that. <laughs> I'll, I'll double check. Yes, this is the eighth book in the Wayward Children series. So the Wayward Children series is a series of novellas in which each book usually follows a different main character. So the the odd numbered books usually take place in the real world where these children have like come back and are trying to deal with the consequences. Usually they have like some sort of adventure or something. Sometimes that involves going into a different world, but a lot of the time it's mostly in the real world. And then the even numbered books take place in actual magic worlds. And so this is one of those even numbered ones and we follow Antoinette. And basically Antoinette has been through like a rough couple of years. Her father has died, her mother has remarried. She does not like her new stepfather. And then like huge trigger warning for this book, which like it's, I don't know, I don't think this is a spoiler because like it literally in the author's note at the very beginning, it says like nothing actually happens to our main character, but it is implied that he wants to do something inappropriate to her. So just like be careful. She runs and then she finds a door. This I gave a four out of five stars and I think it's my favorite Wayward World Children's book so far. It was pretty upsetting <laughs> and dark to read and but I thought the overall story was just it was beautiful like there's no other way to put it. My other two favorites that I've had so far are the ones that involve Jack and Jill I will say Jack anyway made it like a teeny tiny cameo like literally only one line but she was there and so I'm like well this just continues. When you're like reading the early chapters like despite the fact that like she put an author's note saying nothing actually happens you just like have a pit in your stomach because like it is the way she wrote it is so unsettling and 
and obviously that just goes to show that she is a really talented author and it really does like it has you on edge and you are just like absolutely rooting for our main character and you like feel so much for her and I do think that it's my favorite way of children's book so far. The next book that I read was An Echo of Things to Come by James Islington. So uh, again I'm not actually going to talk about this too much because I will just leave the link to the live show down below because it is number one the second book in the series and number two backlist book club pick so I read it for that we talked about it did I read it in 24 hours yes did my brain almost melt yes did my eyes actually physically hurt yes I give it three stars the people who dislike the first book seem to enjoy this one more and uh, the two of us that actually liked the first book seem to enjoy the second one less so that's I don't know to do without what you will the series follows yeah, see, I can't do it. I was about to call him the right name, which is Davian, but I can't do it. It's Davian in my head, okay? I'm sorry. Anyways, this book, book. So this series follows Davian, and he is one of the gifted. And years ago, their society was basically controlled by the augurs, who were basically in charge of the gifted. And the augurs used to have visions and mysterious powers, and then one day their powers stopped working. And so the gifted were kind of trying to cover this up, and they got a little bit out of control, and we're doing some pretty bad stuff and then eventually uh, the people rose up and overthrew these people and then a load of new rules were put in place to control the gifted and those are still in place at the start of the story so there's a lot of tension between like normal people and the gifted and Davian is one of the gifted in his school but he has never been able to work his powers and his trials are coming up soon and if he doesn't pass these trials he is going to uh, lose his powers and be thrown out. Basically it is the night before his trials and someone comes to him and says that he is not going to pass them and he needs to run and so he does. That this is very much like middle book syndrome for me. I still like overall enjoyed it at three stars at a good rating but it just it just like didn't grip me as much as the first book and I say that as someone who read it in 24 hours. Like I just I will say like I do find the writing style very addictive and very quick to get through. It was very repetitive for me. So one of the points of views is Caden and he's just constantly having flashbacks which like I understand the need for them but it got very annoying and very repetitive and it just felt like his point of view was there purely to tell us about the history of the world and so that we could get more world building and then every other point of view was to like move the plot forward but they all felt very disjointed because none of the characters were together at all like they were all off doing their own separate things and so it just none of it felt very connected i will say like davian and weir's point of views were like the most connected even though they weren't together at all in this book but i still like felt like okay i get how both of these point of views are leading to the same goal but everyone else i was like where do you come into this i do think that my favorite point of view was weir's which uh, I didn't really care that much about him in the first book but uh, I much preferred him in this one but I am a bit nervous that his point of view that his like storyline will just repeat itself in the third book but I'm hoping not and yeah I am excited for the third book the way the book ends hmm? Hmm? also did I literally finish this like exactly at like five o'clock when the live show was maybe then we are going to talk about the next four together and I'm not going to go into detail onto them because I already have a blog which is a I try reading cozy fantasy reading blog so I read four books for that so the so the first one that I read for that was A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. Kingfisher and I gave this a three out of five stars. It follows a 14 year old girl and she has magic but she can only use her powers on like baked goods so she can make like gingerbread men dance and she can make bread not stale anymore but nothing grand and then like a murder happens and she kind of gets caught up in it and then there might be like a war coming and all and she has to kind of learn how to use her magic to help others and it's cute it's sweet but T King for sure books they take me so long to actually get into like the first 50 percent I couldn't care less uh whereas like the last half I was super invested and like had a great time but the first half I did not care. So then the next book that I read for that reading blog was Small Miracles by Olivia Atwalter. I gave this book four out of five stars and it was my favorite book of the month. I loved this book. I had such a fun time with this. Like I definitely understand like the humor is not for everyone but it is very much my sense of humor and so I had a great time. I will say like my two complaints with it were like it got like a little repetitive in the middle and also 
I do wish like that handle of grief was like dealt with just a teeny tiny bit more but I love the characters I love the plot I loved the humour in it as I said very much my sense of humour so it worked for me and as I said my favourite book I think it's actually still my favourite book of the year so far so yeah then my next book was Stargazy Pie by Victoria Goddard and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars and this one this one really conflicted me because like there was like the elements of brilliance in there but it just didn't work. Although I didn't tell you what Small Miracles is about. It's about a fallen angel who is trying to tempt this woman to do bad deeds because his like angel brother or sister or whatever uh, thinks that she needs to have a bit of fun, <laughs> basically. And then Stargazy Pie is about a man who comes back from university and kind of his name is has been dragged through the mud. He is and so he is now working in a bookshop and then there is this weird pie that they all find and they're trying to solve the mystery of this pie which sounds very strange that's because it is I like I loved the strange factor I loved the weirdness of this book but it just didn't work for me it was a bit too long and a bit too convoluted and I yeah and yeah so it just didn't quite work for me but I am very interested to try some of her other stuff because as I said like the strange unique factors of it I really did love so I, I'm i definitely gonna like see about reading some of her newer stuff and then the last book that I read for that vlog was Legends and Lattes by Traps Baldry and I give this a three out of five stars so this one I feel like everyone knows what it is it follows Viv who used to be a mercenary but now she has put down her sword and has moved to this town and she has decided to open a coffee shop and it just follows her opening the coffee shop trying to convince people to try it out and getting more staff getting making friends all of that and it is very sweet but I just didn't personally like emotionally connect to it and I didn't um and again it was one that I just kind of found a bit repetitive after a while and so didn't quite love it but I still understand why people love it but didn't quite work for me and as I said a three star the next book that I'm going to talk about is The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick and I actually started this back in November but then I got sidetracked because I had a lot of things to do and exams to study for and then I finally came back to it and I give this a four out of five stars. This book is so hard to talk about because like the synopsis like is that actually how it is? I'm gonna get redo the synopsis off the back and then kind of like add on to it. Ren is a con artist who has come to the sparkling city of Nedezra, I don't want to say sure on the pronunciation, with one goal, to trick her way into a noble house, securing her fortune and her sister's future. But her masquerade is just one of many, and as corrupt nightmare magic begins to weave its way through the city of dreams, the poisonous feuds of its nobility and the shadowy dangers of its impoverished underbelly becomes tangled with Ren at their heart. And that one, and you're like, oh wow, that sounds like super like fast-paced con artist all of this and like also there's a vigilante because like that's what I had heard about I like you immediately you're like oh this must be like really fast-paced all that no <laughs> no 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 you straight right now absolutely not it is a very slow paced book it took me like I would say I can usually like I definitely read at least a page a minute usually more and but with this one I was so slow at reading it like it took me ages to get through it but I still really enjoyed it it is not supposed to be fast-paced it is absolutely supposed to be a slow paced but I feel like the synopsis doesn't really set that uh, tone to it it does follow Ryan and she is a con artist but it isn't like super fast or anything like that it's a really slow build and we which is something I actually really appreciate about it because number one we really got to understand Ren and her character and her relationship with her sister and just kind of her history with this city but we also really got the details of this con because I feel like in a lot of like heists and things like that in books a lot of the time they just like skim over details and then like once it's done we come back and they're like this was the plan all along but like that is not the case with this book we are getting every single step of that plan laid out ahead of us and we are like getting the details of how this is going to work and how they think that it will work and then we get to see how it plays out and the changes and all of this and so it is supposed to be slow and we are like supposed to kind of like sit with it it is a book that is really detailed world building like really we get to know every single thing about like the lower classes and the nobility 
and kind of the messy history of it like they really do an incredible job of building this world and setting a scene and I think that maybe one of the reasons why I didn't love it was because I went in with the wrong expectations to it. I a four stars I just really enjoyed because it is very well crafted. I overall like enjoy the story. I didn't love any of the characters but I am very intrigued to see where the next book will go. Uh, it is not a very character based book and it is also not very plot filled I feel like. It's like as in there is definitely a plot but it is a very slow drawn out and a detailed one. So like if you like fast action this isn't going to be for you. This is definitely for the people who like all of the details that you could possibly imagine. So if you like that you may like this. <laughs> so yes, so four out of five stars. The final book that I read in January was The Wolf of Oranyaro by K.S. Veloso and I gave this a three out of five stars and it was kind of a low three stars but it was a three stars nonetheless and again I feel like I can just read my Goodreads review uh, which is only like two lines long but like the world and the politics the writing was super quick and addictive but the story started to get repetitive and our main character was a complete idiot. Yeah I feel like I feel pretty confident in that review but we are told constantly that she is like such a badass and all of this where she was such an idiot and she kept putting herself in these like really stupid situations and I just wanted to jump into this world and smack her <laughs> like what are you thinking because like at first like I was like oh she's unlikable but like that's the way she's supposed to be because like she's obviously gr because she has grown up really privileged and so of course she doesn't actually like know like this and that about like you know commoners and so like at first I was like oh she's supposed to be unlikable then she started to become unlikable because she just was a complete idiot and then like I was supposed to be feeling sympathy for her at some point and I was like no I don't feel sympathy for you because this is your own fault <laughs> I will say there was some other points where I did feel sympathy because I was like oh my god your husband is the worst and also this person is also the worst and I was like okay everyone is just the worst <laughs> like there was nobody in this book that I actually wrote it about actually no there was like one person I feel about it I feel like it was good for a debut which is okay I, but I feel like most debuts they want to just be good they want to be good for being good whereas this one was good for a debut it wasn't a good book it was a good debut those were all 10 books that I read in January I'm really happy to be like back on the reading train you know so I think that is all. Yes. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.